Over the weekend, I went to go and see Paranormal Activity live on stage. Yes, it's a real thing, and oh boy, is it something. So about a week or two ago, I saw an advert on Facebook for a stage adaptation of Paranormal Activity, and the marketing consisted of, shh, don't say what happens. I thought, huh. That's bait. And they have these Vox Pops with people who have just come out of the show and they're basically saying how amazing it was and how they were absolutely blown away by some of the things that they saw. Well, I know that I'm not gonna sleep tonight. Um... Oh my God, it was wild. I am just shell-shocked. Uh, no, he's got shell shock. He's not sure where he is. The team doctor seeing to him there and yes, it's shell shock. Something suspicious is happening in the center of Leeds. A lot of suspicious things are probably happening in the centre of Leeds. But anyway, no, carry on. Whatever happens in the Courtyard Theatre, all those who dare to experience it mustn't tell a soul. Grab your drinks at the bar. Oh, that's suspicious activity. Have you seen the prices for drinks in, like, cinemas and theatres? Unbelievable. Honestly, you might as well take the entire family out for the evening in the Bahamas. We were banned from filming inside. See, now I don't know why he phrased it like that. Just say we weren't allowed to film inside. Claiming you were banned is just weird. Like, what did you do? Now I have questions. It was scary. How did they do that? <laughs> do an impression where I went... <gasps> That was it. <laughs> it's amazing. Tell you what, if this show does not make me go, <gasps> then I'm not going to be a very happy bunny. Paranormal activity. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Ballistic. <laughs> well, that's not fair, censoring her reaction like that. I mean, for all I know, she just said, it was awful. I want my money back. I'm going to go. Ballistic. <laughs> Great marketing, though. Showed absolutely nothing and made me think that this is either going to be really, really good, as people are saying, or really, really poo. So I showed the ad to my girlfriend and she was like, let's find out for ourselves. Let's go. Are you brave enough? I was, okay? I don't want to brag, but I was brave enough. I know, I know. Hold the applause. I'm not a hero. I'm just a gamer. Now, this play was in Leeds, so it was about an hour and a half car journey. Now, again, I was expecting this to be absolutely awful, because if you've seen the films... They're not very good. Amy and I love horror films, even if they're bad, because then at least you can make fun of them and still have a good time. I think we watched the first two Paranormal Activity films, but we had to do it in installments because we literally couldn't stop falling asleep through them. That's how boring they are. Horror films are supposed to keep you awake, not put you to sleep. So for those of you that don't know, Paranormal Activity is a found footage horror film series consisting of cameras set up around a house to capture the paranormal activity. They're really not scary, okay? They're, they're, they're just not. It's just a bunch of footage of cupboards opening by themselves, doors slamming, characters walking slowly or acting weirdly because they're possessed, characters being dragged across the floor. You never actually see the ghost, so you'll just get like a dog barking at nothing. Ooh. So like I can imagine with most people, I had very low expectations for paranormal activity live. But let me tell you, it was actually amazing. No joke, this was just pure entertainment and an unbelievably good horror experience. It was by far the best play that I have ever seen, and I have seen three plays. Now, as mentioned before, all of the advertising heavily relies on the whole no spoiler aspect, but considering I went to the last showing, I'm sure I can say a little bit. I mean, as far as I'm aware, I'm under no legal obligation to keep my mouth shut about it, but I also don't want to give too much away in case it does come back or becomes available around the world, because my non-spoiler review is go and see it. If you're a fan of horror, you're really going to want to see this, and if you're a fan of the films, well, first off, why? But secondly, it's not hard, but the story is ten times better than any of the films, and it's also a lot scarier. That's right, I'm not afraid to admit it, okay? I got a little jumpy. But it's not because I'm a scaredy cat. No way, Jose. It's because I'm ready. You know, if someone comes up to me with the element of surprise and like touches my shoulder or something, I'm like, whoa, <laughs> I'm ready. Probably also didn't help that we had speakers right in front of our faces. We actually had front row seats. We were that close to the stage that if I were to lean forward, my nose would be touching it. If I got bored or the performance was bad, I could have just started spitting on the actors. You know, they're there reading out a boring monologue and I'm just there like, It's not funny. <laughs> but the option was there because that's how close we were. I mean, if they'd have played one of these bad boys, I'd have no skin. 
I should probably mention as well that there was this really sweet old couple sat next to us who said that they don't like horror, but their friends had bought tickets for this show and they had to drop out last minute, so they gave them to them and they thought, what the hell? Which I really respect. I mean, they hate horror, but they had nothing better to do, I guess. Fair enough. So I made a mental note to keep my eye on them throughout the show, which I didn't. I forgot they were there, if I'm gonna be honest. Anyway, l let's get back to the show. So as the curtains rose, we got our first look at the set, which I, I need to say was really well designed. I don't know what I was expecting, probably just like a couch in the middle of the stage, surrounded by boxes. You know, it starts with one of the characters going, Oh boy, we finally moved into this new house. What was that noise? <laughs> a ghost? Please, ghosts don't exist. <laughs> Again low expectations, but it was essentially like a doll's house, a facade. So there was an upstairs bit and a downstairs bit, and they were split off into different rooms. Now this is where the front row seating may have been a bit of a bad idea, because when the characters were upstairs, we could only really make out about the top half of them because we're looking up at them like that and obviously we can't, the, the, the ceiling's in the way. But luckily the majority of the spooky stuff all happens downstairs, to which we had a perfect view. In terms of a story, again, I don't wanna give too much away in case this does come back in some way, but it centers around a young married couple who have recently moved from Chicago to London. The woman who's called Lou is on medication for depression because as we learn, she has a pretty perverse backstory and she's been seeing things around the house and her husband James doesn't believe her until he starts seeing things too. That's the vague version. I promise you, it, it's not shit. All of the characters are actually really likable. They're, they're written really well. Okay, there's one joke in there that was like something out of a Marvel film. Not one of these ones, one of these ones. Like, I did sigh. After a phasmophobia-style ghost event happens, James sees that the gas was turned on and suggests that Lou did it and she just forgot to turn it off. She says that it wasn't her that did it, he disagrees, and mid-argument, she says, you're literally gaslighting me. I'm gonna give you a brief pause just so you can take that in. You can just tell that the writer just couldn't help themselves there. They saw the opportunity and they were like, nah, I have to. I'm gonna give it a pass because I'm not gonna pretend that I could do any better. Because as Amy pointed out once I brought that joke to her attention, I once made a short about horses chasing me and me communicating with some kind of horse god. So yeah, fair enough, point taken. We can't all be Shakespeare. Now I'm very ADHD brained, so even if I'm watching a film that I'm really enjoying and I'm really into it, I will have moments where my brain will just slip away and I just stop paying attention and miss some stuff. This happens all of the time. And I'll be honest, it only really happened once during this show. After a scene change, there was a moment where Lou was sitting at the kitchen table and she was on her laptop talking to her family, I think. And I was just not paying attention to anything that was being said. I don't think it was anything important. But do you know when like your brain just puts impulsive ideas into your head? Like you'll be talking to your boss at work and then all of a sudden you'll think, wouldn't it be funny if I just poked him in the eye? No, no it wouldn't. No, don't do that. Or like a random funny animal meme will pop into your head. So you just stood there trying not to laugh because from the other person's perspective, you're just gonna look crazy because you're laughing at nothing. I'm hoping someone is nodding. Well, during this scene, I thought, wouldn't it be funny if I started quoting Nigel Farage during this quiet monologue? You know, someone in the front row just going, Boring! 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 And I found the thought of me doing that hilarious. So I was just laughing in my own head, having a great time. I was really trying not to laugh because it was really quiet. I could feel the woman next to me looking at me wondering what the fuck is this child? But other than that, it was very thoroughly entertaining and I didn't really have any other moments of, ooh, pretty lights. Also, I, I should point out that I was quite distracted by how much the lead male looked like Nathan Drake from Uncharted. It really upset me because I know it's been a couple years now, but why did they choose Tom Holland? Anyway, I digress. A lot. Let's get to the whole no spoiler things. Obviously you have all the story details, which again, I will keep vague. Just take my word for it, it's good. Source? Trust me, bro. So the moment I realized this was going to be good, and I mean the whole audience gasp, was when James was preparing to cook some food. Lou comes downstairs, she talks to him, and then she starts cutting up vegetables. Now she's wearing a dressing gown and she has her hood up, but it is definitely her. James is joking around with her, having a little bit of banter, and then Lou comes downstairs and says, James, who are you talking to? James turns around and faces who he thought was Lou. The dressing gown just suddenly drops to the floor and that person is now gone. This happens right before your eyes. It is just brilliant misdirection. And then the scene ends with the real Lou saying, 
Now do you believe me? Scene ends, the lights go out, and I'm just like... <gasps> there are plenty more things like that that happen throughout the show, but I'm not going to say any more because I'm worried that the people that work on it are going to be pissed off that I've just spoiled that. In their eyes, I'm sure I'm now equal to Hitler. I mean, if I had to complain about something, I am a little bit gutted that not once did any of the characters say, What are you saying? That we're experiencing some kind of... Paranormal activity? Live? But like I said, we can't all be Shakespeare. So I'm sure that there's lots of elements in terms of set design that are obviously kept secret because there's loads of instances where characters will disappear and then reappear on the other side of the set within like moments. It's just really well done. And again, I cannot stress enough how much better this is than any of the films. Oh, and after it finished, I asked that old couple that I mentioned earlier if they were gonna go home and watch the films now, to which they replied with, no. Which means that they were paying attention, because before the show started, I told them that the films were poopy. But here, the actors were fantastic, the set design was amazing, the scares were intricately fought out. It was honestly just a great time. And I don't know if this is ever going to tour. I know that this was the world premiere of it, so I don't know if there are any future plans to bring it back. But if it does come out near you, go and see it. You'll have a great time. And if you don't, just come back to this video, type away in the comments and call me a liar. To which I'll probably just tell you to suck eggs. So anyway, yeah, just a different kind of video where I just kind of sit and talk about something. Thanks for watching. Go and see it. Bye!